This video series will provide you with a detailed chapter-by-chapter -chapter summary of the book Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen R. Covey. This book is a timeless classic. It has helped so many people, myself included, in the areas of personal growth and development, career success, and overall well-being. It's a book that means a lot to me because it has changed my life for the better time and time again. It has provided me with the tools to solve my own problems effectively, to have better relationships with the people that I care about, to perform better at work, and to produce more income, and I find myself immensely inspired to reframe my perspective on the situation in a way that lets me take charge. Whether you have read The Seven Habits before and are just looking for a quick refresher, or you have yet to read it and you're just curious about the lessons inside, then this video summary is for you. All relevant links can be found in the video description down below, including a downloadable worksheet that will help you get the most out of this video, and a limited time offer for two free audiobooks through Amazon's Audible. And just a quick background on the author, Stephen Covey was a student of business, earning his MBA from Harvard, followed by his doctorate in religious education from Brigham Young University. He was a teacher, professional speaker, consultant, management expert, and author of many books and publications. Part one of Stephen Covey's book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, lays the groundwork for the rest of the book by introducing some key concepts, including paradigms and principles, the personality ethic versus the character ethic, and the inside-out approach. So what is the inside-out approach? For his doctoral dissertation, Covey studied about 200 years worth of American self-help literature on the topics of success, personal development, and popular psychology. He noticed that much of the work in the last 50 years or so seemed a bit superficial. By that, I mean it focused more on social image and appearances, getting what you want with tips and techniques, attitudes and behaviors, and quick fixes that seemed more like putting a band-aid on the situation than addressing the root cause. He calls this the personality ethic, and this ethic prioritizes outward success over inner success. On the other hand, the previous 150 years had a more substantial focus on something that he refers to as the character ethic. This touches on things like integrity, humility, fidelity, temperance, courage, justice, patience, industry, simplicity, modesty, the golden rule, and smashing the like button if you're getting value out of this video. These elements of our character are found inside of us. Covey argues that the best path to lasting success and effectiveness is to work from the inside out. Focusing on our basic goodness must come first before simply working on techniques such as our positive mental attitude or faking interest in others in order to get what you want. It is important to note that he does not say it is bad or wrong to work on certain areas of the personality ethic. Working on things like personality growth, communication skills, influence strategies, and positive thinking can have big impacts on our success. But he does point out that these traits are secondary to those of the character ethic. Positive mental attitude can go a long way when it is built on the foundation of a quality character. Primary greatness must come before secondary greatness and primary greatness is built on basic goodness. My absolute favorite example of primary greatness that anybody can do right now is to subscribe to this channel because it helps me make more videos like this for you to watch in the future. So to better explain the concepts of primary greatness and secondary greatness, the author says, if I try to use human influence strategies and tactics of how to get other people to do what I want, to work better, to be more motivated, to like me and each other, while my character is fundamentally flawed, marked by duplicity and insincerity, then in the long run, I cannot be successful. My duplicity will breed distrust, and everything I do, even so-called good human relations techniques, will be perceived as manipulative. Now, let's talk about paradigms. What is a paradigm exactly? Paradigms are the mental models theories, assumptions, and frames of reference that we use to interpret the world. These models shape our perceptions, our thoughts, and ultimately our behaviors. They dictate how we see ourselves, how we see others, and how we see our situations. Covey says that paradigms are like maps. We know that maps are not the actual territory, but they are how we understand and choose to maneuver around the actual territory. In the book, he paints a picture of trying to get to a destination in Chicago by using a mislabeled map that's actually that of Detroit. 
If we think that the map of Detroit is actually one of Chicago, we will keep trying to use it to get where we're going, and we will struggle immensely along the way because it is the wrong map. As we struggle, we may think that the problem is with our behavior. Maybe we need to move faster, or maybe we need to pay closer attention to the street signs. Or perhaps the problem is our attitude. Can't we just be positive and not worry about the fact that we're lost? Sure. But we're still lost. And the only effective way to fix that is to realize that we've got the wrong map. And then we need to take the necessary steps to get our hands on the correct map. Another way to describe paradigms is that they are the lens through which we see and understand the world. We tend to believe that we see things as they truly are and that we're objective about it, when in reality, we see things the way that we're conditioned to see them. When other people disagree with us, we generally think something's wrong with them. However, a group of sincere and clear-headed people can all see different things if they are looking through different lenses of conditioning. Covey argues that highly effective people are conscious of their paradigms and they proactively choose principles to guide their lives. Instead of just examining the things and problems that we see in the world, we should first examine that lens through which we see those things and those problems. This is the inside-out approach. By contrast, the outside-in approach means that external circumstances dictate our happiness and success. Outside-in says, it's not my fault that these things are happening to me. And this approach really takes the control away from us. Inside Out puts the control back in our hands and says, these things may be happening, so what can I do about it? So what is a paradigm shift? A paradigm shift is a break with tradition or old ways of thinking. It is the aha moment when we realize that something could actually be different than the way we've thought of it all along. A paradigm shift moves us from one way of thinking to another. Covey gives us several examples of paradigm shifts in history. The Egyptian astronomer, Ptolemy, he saw the Earth as the center of the universe, and many went along with that for a long time, until Copernicus came along and put the Sun at the center of our solar system model. Newton's model of physics, though correct, was partial and incomplete. Then Einstein introduced his theory of relativity, changing the lens through which we understand physics. The United States was founded on a concept of constitutional democracy, which was a massive paradigm shift from the traditions of monarchies which had preceded it. Now, let's talk about principles. So what are principles exactly? Principles are universal natural laws that supersede personality, mood, and circumstance. They are guidelines for human conduct with enduring permanent value. They act as a compass, guiding us regardless of the situation. Covey argues that effectiveness comes from aligning our behaviors with principles, not with temporary fads or fleeting desires. So back to our map metaphor. If paradigms are the map of the territory, then principles are the territory itself. Whether or not we have the correct map has absolutely no bearing or impact on the landscape. The landscape just is what it is. Nothing more and nothing less. Covey says that principles are self-evident and can be easily validated by any individual. Fairness is one example. Most children seem to be innately aware of the concept of fairness, regardless of how they define it or if they achieve it. Integrity and honesty are two other principles which together create the foundation for trust. Human dignity is a concept baked into the U.S. Constitution. Service is the concept of making a contribution. Quality is another one. We can all tell when somebody went the extra mile to make something of quality. If the quality of this video has provided you with value, then drop a hammer on that like button. And don't forget to subscribe. In the book, Covey names other principles like excellence, potential, growth, patience, and more. He distinguishes the difference between a principle and a practice. Practices are specific actions or activities which are situational. Practices may be born out of universal principles, but they are not the same. When we internalize principles as habits, we become empowered to act out a variety of practices in order to deal with different situations. Now that we have a better idea about paradigms and principles and the inside-out approach, it's time to dig into the habits themselves. Habit one, be proactive and you can empower yourself to proactively click on this next video here, which ties into much of what we talked about in this video. So click here now, and I'll see you in the next video.